is that time again. You're doing your taxes. And you're trying to figure out how to decipher the Schedule A. Itemized deduction. In this video, I'm going to do a quick run through of the Schedule A to try to demystify some of the line items and certain thresholds so that you can have more confidence as you fill out your Schedule A and understand why or why not you're opting for the standard deduction versus itemized deduction. This is the Schedule A itemized deduction tax year 2022. Top right, your social security number should pull over from the 1040. Medical and dental expenses. First, go into the IRS, look up the 2022 instruction for Schedule A. You can read on what qualifies as a medical and dental expenses and tally up the numbers, bring them over to the Schedule A line one. Next, line two. This is gonna come from line 11 from your 1040. Once you fill out your 1040, it's gonna populate your AGI line 11. For this example, I put $100,000. It's gonna flow over into this line right here, line two, $100,000. There is a floor of 7.5% of your AGI. You need to surpass the 7.5 of your AGI before you can start itemizing your medical and dental expense. 7.5% of 100,000 is 7,500. You will need to spend more than 7,500 before you can actually itemize your medical and dental expense. 7,500 is more than 5,000. The 5,000 you spent would be disallowed. If you spent 8,000, 7,500 of it would be disallowed. 500 would be allowed and it will flow to line four. Taxes you paid, SALT, state and local taxes. For 5A, this would be your state income tax that's withheld or your general sales taxes. I use 5,000 for income tax in this example. State and local real estate tax, this would be your property tax on your home. I use 5,000 in this example. State and local personal property tax, this would be taxes on your vehicle. I use $300. You add them up, 5D totals $10,300. 5E, there is a ceiling, a cap of $10,000. $5,000 if Mary filing separately. You compare 5D versus the 10,000. Anything above 10,000 is disallowed. So 10,3 is more than 10,000. 10,000 flows over to line seven. Interest paid, whole mortgage interest in point. I use 10,000 in this example. This would be pulled from your 1098 mortgage statement. And if there's any points or any mortgage interest that was not reported, you will enter them in 8B and 8C. Be mindful of the mortgage interest. There is a limit on how much interest you can claim based on the principal and when you incur the mortgage. You can read more about it on the IRS publication 936. It will break out the details further. Once you have filled out all of the interest you paid in this section, it will flow over to line 10. Gifts to charity. If you made any cash or check donation, that will go on line 11. If you made any non-cash donation, that will go on line 12. If you have any disallowed gifts from the prior year, that will roll over on line 13. Remember, if you donated over $500 of non-cash or check, you will need to fill out Form 8283. This is Form 8283, non-cash charitable contribution. The IRS wants to know who you donated the property to, what kind of property it was, 
the appraisal method, their costs, and the list goes on. If you have some time, take a look at this list. It's pretty extensive. So in our example, we donated $300 cash and $1,000 of non-cash, non-check properties equaling $1,300. The total will go to line 14. The next section is casualty and theft losses. This section is going to be difficult to qualify for. If you want to read more information about it, you can do so on irs.gov. Other itemized deduction. Again, if you want to find out more information about this line item, you can read it on irs.gov. The final piece, total itemized deduction. You would add up the right column 4, 7, 10, 14, 15, 16, and the total would be line 17. And for whatever reason, if your itemized deduction is higher than your standard deduction and you want to opt for your standard deduction, there is a box here under 17 to the left of it to select. So next we will add up all of our itemized deductions and see what the total is. In this example, that total is 21,800. If you were to add up 500, 10,000, 10,000, 1,300, 21,800. That is our total itemized deduction. What we do is we will go here and we will compare it to our standard deduction. You see this line right here? 12, this is form 1040. So let's say we're filing single. Our standard deduction would be 12,950. In this case, we will take our itemized deduction. 21,800 will go here because your itemized deduction is higher than your standard deduction. Let's say instead of being single, we are married, filing jointly. Our standard deduction will be 25,9. Then we go back to the 1040. We're gonna opt for the 25,9, which is a standard deduction for married filing jointly as to the itemized deduction of 21,800 is more. So we would take the standard deduction under the filing status of Mary filing jointly. So how does this help you minimize taxes? Let's say you fill this form out August of 2022. And this is where you're sitting, 21,800. Your filing status is Mary filing jointly, which the standard deduction is 259. You're roughly $4,000 off before you can itemize. So what you can do is you can plan medical and dental expense from August through December of 2022 to try to capture more itemization in that area. So for example, you incur another 5,000 in medical expense. So now you're at 13. So technically this will go up 50. So to 5,500. So now you can itemize. So now every dollar in any of the categories that you incur, it becomes deductible. So that medical and dental expenses kick you into itemization. You look through the Schedule A. The next thing that pops out to me is gift and charity. So from August through December, now you can look around to find things that you do not need and you can donate it. So you have a good intention and at the same time you save more taxes so now every dollar of whatever you donate to charity becomes deductible based on your AGI there's also a threshold for the charitable deduction 50 60 percent of your AGI if it's cash or 30 percent it depends on the property again you got to read it that's the schedule a in a nutshell I hope this brought you some value. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Until next time, stay safe and live your best life.